Hello students, so welcome back to my YouTube channel again. Okay, so now this is the video I am preparing on the chapter friction. Okay, so this is the first video on the chapter friction. Okay, so let us try to understand now what is the importance of friction in the introduction part first. Okay, as I mentioned here, force of friction is very important in our daily lives. Okay, so we have to understand how much important is the friction in our daily life first. Okay, so it is very much necessary to walk, run, rotate or the wheels etc. Just few examples here. So because without the friction, first of all, you are not able to stand steadily, firmly. And similarly, we are not able to walk. Okay, we are not able to run. So it is not at all possible to perform such regular daily activities. Okay, for example, even if you consider the machines, so if you want to rotate the wheels, okay. It is, it is not possible to rotate the wheel without the friction, okay. So that means, so in order to perform all mechanical activities or physical activities, the force of friction is very much important. That is what you have to understand here, okay. So it is necessary for an object to move with constant velocity. So you know that when the body is moving with constant velocity, so you have to understand the body is moving with zero acceleration. That means, according to Newton's first law, if a body is considered to be moving with constant velocity, so what is the acceleration? Acceleration is zero. So it has to continue with the same velocity without external force acting on it. Okay, if the force external on it, that means it is an opposing force. So that may be a frictional force also. Then only it is changing its velocity. Otherwise, it has to move with the constant velocity only. Okay, that means you have to understand that, okay, there is a uh, applied force acting on the body in order to move the body but that is balanced by some opposing force that is called actually the frictional force okay when the applied force and frictional force are balance each other then the body can move with the constant velocity and with zero acceleration clear and similarly now if the applied force suppose exceeds the frictional force applied force exceeds the frictional force then we can say the object is moving with some acceleration okay it is accelerated according to newton's second law the body is accelerated so that means you have to understand that some extra force is applied on the body to increase its speed okay it is moving with the uh, increasing velocity that means it is accelerated also that is what uh, we have discussed in the newton's laws correct okay that means so in order to <coughs> perform any uh, motion particularly in general so we need one of the important force that is called frictional force okay in addition to the applied force we need to consider the frictional force also as one of the important physical parameter in the motion clear okay now how do you define the friction then so let us consider the definition of the friction like this the property by vir virtue of which an opposing is generated okay some kind of opposition force it is so so it is a property so by virtue of which it is generated between the two surfaces in contact with each other and which opposes the relative motion of the surfaces is known as the friction so that means normally so one can experience this uh, uh, frictional force when the two objects are in contact okay so at the surface of the contact so the property of opposition is exerted okay that is the uh, property we call it as the frictional force here between the two relative motion between the two bodies so when, when the bodies are in contact and there should be a relative motion okay one of the body may be at rest other body may be moving okay so that there should be in general relative motion between the two bodies to see the uh, property called frictional force here okay so then particularly if you call that uh, friction as a property then we can justify that force as the frictional force here see the force which opposes the sliding okay sliding means so the body may be sliding over the other body so sliding or it is undergoing relative motion of the two bodies in contact with each other is known as the force of friction okay or we can generally call it a frictional force clear okay now the question is how this frictional force arises that means you have to understand the origin of frictional force 
okay so when the two bodies are in contact as just now we explained there is a opposition to the applied force okay that is called actually the frictional force but how this frictional force arises uh, always at the point of contact between the two bodies okay now look at here so when the two bodies are uh, placed in contact okay the actual area of contact is much smaller than the apparent area of the contact you think that when the two bodies are uh, in contact the total area will be considered as the area of contact right but that is not the case if you look at microscopically between the two bodies which are in contact okay so that actual contact area is much smaller than the apparent area what you calculate why that is because see look at the surface of contact microscopically okay if you observe microscopically so only there are some sharp edges because none of the surface are perfectly smooth okay you can't consider the perfect smooth body at all microscopically you can observe that the surface is consisting of this kind of see the sharp edges sharp edges we can say or some deep valleys and hills we call it as hills and valleys also okay so the when the two bodies are in contact then so these sharp edges are on, are only in contact so then you calculate the actual area of the contact with the help of the area which is covered by only these sharp points only okay so that gives a actual area of contact but what we do here is the entire area is considered as the contact area that is called actually the apparent area you know so compared to apparent area of the contact the actual area is very small because it is touching that the other surface only at the sharp edges the molecular edges the atomic edges right so because of that the two bodies are interlocked each other okay so there will be a molecular adhesion takes place so that is called actually the surface adhesion or molecular adhesion takes place between the two surfaces okay so that is very important to be observed here so the surface of any body is never perfectly smooth and the and uh, it appears to be welded to each other okay it appears to be welded to each other at the sharp points due to high pressure when it is kept on each other due to weight okay due to high pressure they interlock each other and the atomic molecular forces also okay so this is actually called the molecular adhesion property okay the bodies are interlocked each other because of the molecular adhesion property okay so that means if you want to move any particular body over the other body you have to overcome that adhesive force adhesive force between the two surfaces must be overcome by the applied force then only it is possible to move the body otherwise it is just uh, interlocked each other and due to the normal force you know there is a normal force which is uh, acting always perpendicular to the surface of the two bodies okay perpendicular to the surface will make the body to be always in contact okay now look at here when the applied force overcome the adhesive force as i just know told here the applied force overcome the adhesive force or welding effect also okay the relative motion takes place otherwise it is not possible to get the relative motion okay so that frictional forces are the electrical origin you have to understand because it is intermolecular we said you know so it must be electrical origin hence there is always an opposition to the relative motion between the bodies okay that is the cause so why there is a relative motion between the two bodies because of this kind of surface adhesion or molecular adhesion so it is uh, we need to apply some additional force to get the relative motion so that is what actually opposed by this adhesive force we can understand here okay the opposing force that opposing force is known as the force of friction okay now this force of friction depends on three important parameters here so what are that the the nature of the two surfaces in contact because the frictional force is not same for all the bodies on what type of body we are uh, surface of the body we are keeping the other body you have to look at the surface whether the surface of the body is very smooth or or if it is very rough okay so depending upon nature of that surface of the body we see the uh, magnitude of the frictional force and similarly 
it also depends on normal force with the surface okay because as i told normal force is the force which is making the body to be in contact always okay the surface uh, perpendicular surface uh, perpendicular force you can say as the normal force here okay depends upon that normal force with the surface and similarly it also depends upon the actual area of the contact okay if you take a small body on the surface it is easy to pull it because uh, area of contact is very small if you take the same body in the bigger size so that the area of contact increases and then we need to apply larger force to pull it over the other surface so it depends upon of course on the area of contact also okay now let us see how this uh, uh, friction is a self adjusting force okay friction as a self adjusting force so look at the uh, figures here to understand how the force that uh, frictional force is actually uh, is increasing from zero okay when the frictional force is said to be zero you know say when the two bodies are in contact okay so body is at rest we say that the body is at rest on a, a platform so now so the force between the, these two bodies at the surface of the contact is said to be zero so there is no frictional force okay actually the body is uh, uh, standing on the other body with the help of its weight isn't it w is equal to mg and it is Uh, equivalently opposed by another force that is called normal force perpendicular to the surface so due to these two equilibrium forces the body is able to stand on the given surface so at that particular condition when there is no external force acting on the body except this w bar and n bar we can understand that between the two bodies at the surface of contact the frictional force that surface force the surface frictional force is equal to zero okay because the body is at rest we call that frictional force is actually the static friction so that the static frictional force is said to be zero in this particular condition now let us consider the same situation with the application of some small force acting on the body you just apply a small force okay so that the body should not move okay the body is still at rest then you cannot say that the static friction is zero here okay so the frictional force is already increasing from zero to some value but still it is less than mu s into n what is this mu s into n you know so the coefficient of static friction mu s and n is the normal force okay so mu s because this equation is obtained by the definition of uh, coefficient of static friction mu s is equal to f s by n by cross multiplication f s is equal to mu s into n so but magnitude of this static friction is less than this mu s into n and hence the body is still at rest with the application of a small force that means the applied force is not sufficient to pull the body okay so that is that, the, that doesn't mean that there is no frictional force now there is a frictional force that is opposing the motion already okay and hence the body is still at rest now look at the next case okay now we consider that the body is still at rest okay but just about to move that means you are increasing the force from small to some maximum value just you increase the force okay the the moment you increase beyond that the body has to move like that you have to increase the force in that condition the static friction that static friction or the self adjusting friction is increasing from zero to some value and then further increasing to some maximum value here okay so that fs maximum is equal to mu s into n now it is not less than mu s n it is equal to mu s into n here okay so that particular maximum uh, frictional force reached is called limiting friction okay so just beyond that the moment you increase little bit force beyond that then the body is started to move okay so that is why it is called the maximum frictional force is called limiting friction the body is still at rest of course but at any time it is about to move okay in the next case of course we are increasing the applied force and the body is moving okay once the body is moving it is crossing the limiting friction and it is entering into the other type of friction that is called actually fk what is that fk you know that is called kinetic friction 
kinetic friction. So like that the body is changing its force, I mean uh, the frictional force is going to be increasing from 0 to some value okay, and to maximum value and then to kinetic friction. Okay. So, like that you can say the frictional force is self-adjusting force depending upon the applied force. When there is no force, F is zero. When the applied force is small, then there is a static friction already started to increase and then reaching to maximum and then become kinetic friction during the motion. Okay, now <laughs> let us try to understand exactly what is the difference between again uh, static friction and the kinetic friction. See, in terms of graph, we can understand one more thing how the uh, frictional force is varying. Okay, you can understand that here from point O to A, okay, Fs is equal to the applied force. Okay, it is not exceeding the applied force, not exceeding the frictional force. So, the maximum uh, static friction Fs maximum is here. So, till then the body is not under motion. So, it is just the applied force is increasing with the applied force and reaches the maximum value. So, that is called static friction here. Okay. Till then, so it is in the region called static region only. The moment you cross the maximum limit, the applied force is exceeding the limiting friction, then the, stat the force of friction is decreasing gradually. Okay. But it is not a smooth decrease okay, because of the rough movement on the surface. Okay. It is decreasing like this up to the point B. Okay. Then it reaches to the complete motion here that is called kinetic friction region. From this point we can understand that it is the body is in motion okay till then it is opposing the applied force with a uh, slight force that is slight frictional force okay. So, and then it is called kinetic region only okay beyond this point A up to C it is a kinetic region okay. So, now finally we can define that static friction is it is the force of friction between the two surfaces so long as there is no relative motion between them, right. Similarly, we can calculate the coefficient of static friction based on that. So, when the body is at rest particularly, the then according to law of limiting friction, according to law of limiting friction, the magnitude of the limiting friction is always directly proportional to the normal reaction. Norm Here you go through the coefficient of static friction and with the expression mu s is equal to Fs maximum by n. Similarly, coefficient of kinetic friction is mu k by n. Okay. Please go through these expressions, then I will see you in the next.